Okay, hello everybody. This is my second take because I've totally just confused myself, um, which is no good when I'm trying to do a video, is it? Right. I've been asked how I made the envelope um, ephemera pocket folder that was in my last journal. Um, if you have a look at my previous video, you'll see it. I haven't got a prototype to show you because that's now on its way to its new owner. Um, but I've had a few people ask me how I made it and I made it out of two envelopes. So I'm going to show you my take on it. Now, this is not my, um, I haven't made this myself. I've watched other people for inspiration and I've seen a few people make these and I can't remember all the, all of the people that I've seen make these, but I can remember that I watched Ruby and Pearl. So I will put a link to her channel below so you can see her take on it. And I know that she linked a person called just I think it's Jacinth and I can't remember the name of her channel. So there are a few people that have made these different variations. Um, and I'm sure if you make one, it will turn out differently, which is absolutely fine. We all put our own take on things. So here we go. Two envelopes. Mine are made out of craft card. Um, I can buy a pack of five of these envelopes in, in different colours from Hobbycraft in the UK. I would like to find some that have these nice rounded um, bits in the UK that are slightly taller and slightly narrower. But unless I want to buy a pack of, uh, you know, a box of 200, it's not going to happen. So what you do is you open one of the envelopes up. I'm not worried that I've torn that because it's going to be I'm going to cover it. So it doesn't matter. I opened the envelope up like that. So far, so good. I then flipped it over onto its back and I folded the edges back in so I've made I've now done the envelope inside out don't ask me why this works for me and I'm sure if you left it the other way it would work as well but I just couldn't get it to work my brain just wouldn't wouldn't work with it so that bit of the envelope I've got on the left hand side and what I'm going to do is this other envelope I've opened it so that it's flat is facing inwards I'm putting that underneath this envelope so I'm lining this flap up with the crease of that like so and then I'm going to close it across there okay I'm sure that's how I did my last one <laughs> and that is famous last words so I'm going to cover that up I'm not gluing on here because you don't want to close that. That's going to be a pocket. So you do not want to close that up. So schoolgirl error would be to put glue all in there. So all I've done is put glue on the edges and I'm going to line that up. And I'm going to close it. So I've now added my other envelope and its other flap is just there. OK. So now I have, except I've folded it not quite right, haven't I? It doesn't matter because we can manipulate it. It's only paper. That is going to go on there like that. These will be the closure to hold it shut. And you can re you're going to cover them. So you might want you might end up refolding them to go over it. And then that's going to go on the inside as well. OK. So that is how I put mine together. So I hope that made sense um, to you. So it's open an envelope up. The other envelope, you slide that bit underneath and glue the flap of that one to it where the hole is, where the opening is, I mean. So this now, I can glue it a little bit better along there because I forgot to put some glue on that bit, didn't I? So I'm going to run some glue down that edge there and close that off. I'm going to sneeze, folks, so I'm just going to switch the video off while I sneeze one moment. OK, sorry about that. Um, so now we've got we've got this. This is how we have it. Um, I've got tissue all over my fingers and everything. So all that it takes then is to decide how you want to decorate this pocket envelope. So I've cut a couple of bits out in anticipation. 
that's the inside of it so I've got this is one of the flaps it's one of those things that you you're going to have to keep opening and closing your flaps <laughs> to try and remember what you're doing so I am going to put glue on the flap oh, and I've cut cut my glue again and again and then I am going to put a piece of paper on there I cut these out in advance because just to make it that little bit quicker. That's the inside. Inside. Okay, so that's that one. And then this one again with my nasty glue that I've cut. I'm going to put glue on the flap. <laughs> can you believe I've done it again I think it's this craft paper it's very firm paper and I'm going to put that on there like so okay I'm just going to cut those so that they aren't overhanging I cut them out a little bit bigger um, I think some people when they've done those have, have glued them and then torn them because they wanted the torn look so you know completely up to you how you decorate and how you cover this is just Carol okay a bit boring watching me cut paper isn't it especially when you know I'm always not that precise at me cutting Okay. a little bit off there now on the inside bit I'm going to put wet glue on that because and I'm just going to cut the corners a little bit because otherwise I can't um, fold it while the while the glue sticks wet because otherwise you get that awful crease so I'm just going to put some glue on there and glue those down these will get covered these bits here when you add your other papers I have shut my window that next door is still having their building work done so if you can hear the the tile grinder going apologies but it's a case of if I wait until it's a quiet street I'd never get a video done at the minute okay so they're both on get rid of all those bits so we've got they're going to fold towards the inside because they're what's going to keep it closed like that so they're going to go on there have a hole in and keep them closed so I need to put papers on those bits so let me do that and come back to you Okay, so I've covered the two flaps on the inside and the outside. That's going to be my top because I've got the writing going that way. But, you know, you can have them go in any way that you want to. It doesn't it, Honestly, it doesn't matter. So the next thing, so let's put mine the way that I'm going to have it. The next thing that I want to do is cover the inside. No, I'm going to. See, it's thinking about how you want to do it because I want to get my, I want to make sure that my ends, my ends, my edges are all covered up. Um, you could stitch around these as well, I guess, if you want to, if you think they're not glued down well enough. But I usually check <coughs> afterwards and go around with the glue. So they're going to fold like that. That's going to come in here and that's going to come over there. So I think that what I want to do is cover the back I'm going to cover the back first so I want something to go over the back the papers that I've got at the moment printed out that I think I will use are from Rachel Rox's creations and these are her French Chateau papers and I think I quite like that well I quite like them all to be honest 
I think what I need to do first though is cover that flap because that is going to open with a paper clip on to keep closed so the inside of that will need to be covered so I'm going to cover it with this nice and easy one moment okay just to show you what I've done then so this is the inside so they're going to close like that they're going to go like that this is the flip that goes to the back of the folio and that will open so I need to put something on here but before I do I'm going to think about what I want to put on that flap because you can hide your papers um, you can sorry just noticed that bit was up you can um, cut your paper to cover these edges up and I, I prefer to do it that way but of course you don't have to you can tear them so that you've got a torn look but I'm going to address this bit first and then put a piece on the back afterwards is the way that I'm going to do it so if we go back that doesn't want to stick down for some reason so that folds like that so if we go back to the inside this I want to be um, a tuck spot that's going to stay um, flexible is the word I'm looking for so I don't want it that deep because it's either going to flap over there and hold that in or it's going to go like that. So I'm going to cut that down. Probably to about there. So let's just snip that off. Something sharp would be good. Although I'm not sure I should be in charge of a sharp implement. So that's the back. Back. Just remember, Carol. So we're going to cover this flap. And if I'm if I think about it, I can put a little bit extra there and a bit extra there. So what would I like on that flap? I wanted to use that for the back. I think I'm going to use that and I think I'm going to fold it on that green line like so so this is going to be my flap okay did anybody see where I hid everything oh they do make so much noise next door honestly I will be pleased when their extension is all done and dusted I think it's the guy that, that that's there now is um fixing the block paving because they had to take the block paving up while they did the extension right so this is going to go over there like so so what i want to do is I want that bit to be about where the fold is so that is not going to be seen because so that's going to go under there it's going to go on there like like that I'm probably confusing everybody and I really don't mean to so if I am confusing you um, I apologize but it's just a case of getting all these edges covered. So I'm going to put glue on here up to that fold. And then I am going to glue that over there. There's probably a much easier way of doing this. And then that is going to fold over there that way. Oops, threw my glue away. So I am then going to glue that on there and all the way over there.
and that will go on there don't need it to come all the way I'm going to cut that I'm going to guesstimate where I need it that wasn't bad oh gosh look at these scissors and then I'm guesstimate where that goes yep that'll be fine and then I just want to squish that down And then I'm going to cut a little bit off the edge because it needs to go inside where that folds. So I'm going to do it on slight, slight angle. And again, this one will fold like that. So I want to do that on just ever so slight an angle. it's going to fold on the inside and then the same as you would cut your corners if you're making a flip do you think I need to de-paper my scissors look <laughs> so that's going to glue on there like that and then that bit's covered nicely as I say, if you want to tear these edges, um, you know, you can do. There we go. So this is the inside. That is becoming our flap. And of course that glue's wet, so I don't really want to fold it, but I'm going to have to just to see where that goes. So now we've got that will go inside, that will go inside, that will close and that will close. So you can see we're starting to get it together now. OK, so I'm going to fold those flaps all in because I want to cover the back that way up. I still haven't glued that down, look. When I've finished putting all my bits and pieces on, I will find another couple of envelopes and... Um, we'll just go through again how I folded them. Once you've folded them, you can decide, you know, how you want to decorate. So that's my top. That flips out. That flips out. On the back, we've got this. We've got this that's going to be a flip. OK. So I'm just going to fold that back a moment. Because I just want to measure this. How big? So that's about four and a half by six, just over six and a quarter. Did I have a piece of paper I wanted to use on the back? I think I might use that end actually. Are you still with me? You are. Right, I've lost my other ruler. Here we go. So four and a half wide I think I've said these are Rachel's um, chateau papers French I think it's French chateau not Italian chateau I don't you don't get chateaus in Italy do you silly Carol so of course it's French chateau and I only want it to be six and a bit don't I It was less than six and a half, wasn't it? It's going to go on there. The width looks good. And I only want it to be about there. So let's cut that bit off. And that beautiful piece, look at that, that can go in my bits box. Make sure I've got it the right way up. 
and that is going to glue on the back there and it fits very nicely on there and it's covering up all those edges look so that's perfect do you know i thought i'd switched you off then <laughs> i hope you're sticking with me folks um sometimes it's quite hard to show how you've made something and to explain how you've decorated it because it, we all do it so differently um i'm trying to think that's the right way so it goes that way i'm trying to think um that's the right way that's upward so that's up um what steps you would take which bits you would need to cover first um, but it doesn't mean that that's what you would do if you were making this you may well decide that you wanted to do something else you know do it a different way but i think what i found easiest is to cover the flaps first that's going to go over like that so she's peeking out there We're getting there, look. So now we've got this. Okay, this is that envelope that we added on. And that is going to be a pocket. Now, I don't want it to go all the way over. But I do want it to be held in by this. So what I'm going to do, you don't have to. You could leave it as that. But I want this to be a tuck. So I'm going to take my pencil. And I'm going to mark it roughly. Is that say half an inch maybe more but i am going to open that envelope along that line and if i could see where i've just marked it i would where did i mark it oh it's that one there right i better move that flap out of the way hadn't i okay so i'm not giving any measurements because it obviously this is going to depend on what size your envelopes are and what you want to do, how you want to have it. I mean, another way that you could do this is you could have cut it down on the angle. So if you'd still had your, excuse me, if you'd still had your bit like that, you could have cut it at an angle like that and had that as a tuck and put a, a journal card in. So you don't have to do it this way. But I want that to go underneath there and to be held down there. And then those are going to close over it there. OK, so now I want to decorate this. Just checking. No, I didn't close my envelope. But I remember from last time that there's little bits in there that are still open. Open, uh, flipping up, flapping up so that if you were to put something in, they might get stuck. So I'm thinking that I would be better to add something all the way across there, maybe. Well, that would go, wouldn't it? And then that would fold onto the inside. That's going to be very fancy. Should we do fancy? I think we will. Um, right, take your edges off, Carol. Think about how best to do this. Let's take these edges off first. Let me take them off and come back to you. OK, so in my befuddled mind, what I think I want to do is cover this, this flap and this pocket with one piece of paper. And I want to be able to turn this over into this pocket just to reinforce it a little bit. So what I'm going to do is put the glue on this. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to just cover under there. Um, it's finding the best way to do things sometimes, isn't it? I'm going to put plenty of glue on there. And 
and then I'm going to glue on there okay and then I'm going to line this up on there and I'm going to squish it down There is a bit of a crease there because that's where we added that extra envelope. But doing it that way I haven't made this bit extra sticky. So I can cut this extra off this flap. like that one moment while I cut it okay so I've got that on got that on there I've cut round it so that will be the flap on the back and then I've got this that will be the flap on the inside and it can either go that way or that way it doesn't matter I cut it a little bit bigger because I just want to make it nice and neat if you don't mind seeing some of your envelope you don't need to do this bit I'm not going to stick that one yet. So fold those in. And then this is my pocket, don't forget. And so I'm going to put some glue carefully on there. And then I'm going to hold the pocket open and I'm going to turn it over to the inside. And I'm going to squish it down. And I'm going to hope that doesn't close my pocket. <laughs> okay, so where are we at now? Inside. This is the inside. We've done that flap. We've now got that flap nicely decorated. That's going to close. You may need to refold these because it's going over that. So you can always just, you know, it doesn't have to be a tight fold. Just manipulate it a little bit so it's a bit rounded there we go so that's going to be like that so now the only bit that we've got left to cover is the inside now the decision I've got is do I put one piece of paper on there which would be easier than putting a piece on there and then a piece on there so I need something to go across there let me just put the lid on my glue I do hope I'm not confusing everybody if I have go through the video again <laughs> do I want that lady in there we'd lose part of that wouldn't we we could have the chateau I think that might be nice actually that's what I'm gonna do so I'm just gonna cut the edges off of this because obviously we don't need those do we <clears throat> excuse me like so okay let's get rid of these little bits oops <coughs> so we've got the inside so we don't need to put it right up to that crease because we've got this paper on so it, that gives us a little bit of leeway so I need it to be seven and a half if I go eight inches that will give me enough to tuck in the other side again so I'm looking to have about eight inches and I'm going to I'm going to take it up to there because then I can use this piece here for a journaling card to go in this because that is one of my most favorite images that um, Rachel has. It's beautiful. So that's going to go on and how tall I need it. Oopsie daisy is about six and a quarter inches 
so I think I'm going to take it I don't want to lose much of that chateau so if I take that bit off and I'm sure that if you make this you will find your own way of decorating it I'm sure I go I'm sure I make it too difficult, too complicated, is what I mean. I'm sure I do. So that is going to go on the inside there. And because we've got these bits folded over, it just gives me a bit of a frame and a little bit of leeway to put it in. Now how best to put, do it? I'm thinking I might... How, where best to put the glue? If I fold that bit over so that that's a rough, a rough bit where I need to glue it to. Yeah, I'll do it that way. I'll do it that way. I'll put the glue on the back of this. Making sure I get all the edges as well as I can. I told you it wouldn't be a quick video, didn't I? I guess it would have been easier if I'd got all the bits of paper cut beforehand. Where would the fun be in that, eh? Right. There's the crease there. That edge there. Not bad. Not bad at all something to squish it down bits of paper stuck everywhere and then this, again, I want to be able to fold in. So I'm just going to trim <clears throat> at a slight angle because otherwise it won't fold in. I know that from experience. <laughs> so that is going to go on the inside of there. Go away. Like that. And then it just neatens all the edges. Am I too precise? Am I too neat and tidy? I probably am. The way I work certainly isn't neat and tidy. If you see the mess on this desk, terrible. Squidge it in. You know, I thought I'd put that on upside down then. Oh, that would just be the icing on the cake, wouldn't it? Now, that's not going to want to fold very well because that's wet. I've just done it. So I'm going to just ease it over my ruler a little bit. I don't want it to form that awful crease that you get. But then you can see what we have. Let me get my, cro cro my crocodile that lives in here. One moment. Okay, I found my crocodile. And I just, I am going to put um, grommet things in there. You don't have to. You could um, stitch a couple of, well, that would be different actually, wouldn't it? So you could just stitch a couple on there and leave two threads and tie it. But I'm going to do it the same as I did the last one. So different options. If you've not got a crocodile, um, then by all means, you could stitch on there. I'm just wondering whether to do that, actually. I might like to do that. I am going to do that, I think. Just to show you so that if you don't have the crocodile, the crop, crop dial carol, say it properly, crop dial. That 
that's my sewing machine talking to me. So I think what I'm going to do is oh, trying to open this sari silk. Oh, there we go. I'm going to stitch that on there and on the other side, on the other end as well. Um, I'm just wondering if I can put a bit of glue just to kind of hold it where I want it. There, and I want it to go back on itself just a little bit, just to make sure it's held down while I stitch it. That's one. I know Sari Silk isn't terribly strong, that's my only reservation. So, you know, you can't pull it tight, otherwise, it'll tear it because it's. I think by nature just very very fragile isn't it but it's too late now because I've made the decision and I've glued it on there we go right I'm just going to go and stitch those on so that they stay in place that would be one minute okay so I'm back and I've um, stitched around the flap so I've stitched all the way around that one I've stitched around the back one and I've stitched around that one and I've stitched around the one on the inside I can't stitch around that because obviously that is a pocket and I don't want to close it up so the way that it closes is they come up like so and we don't pull those tight because it's only sorry and it closes. I think this, I just grabbed this piece of sari because I thought it would be a nice colour. And it does actually go with it, doesn't it? I'm terrible at tying um, ribbon. There we go. So there we have it. Um, the ephemera holder, that still opens and you can hold it closed with a paper clip. Um, I've only got big paper clips on my desk, but if you had a nice paper clip, then you would close it too. Hmm, got it stuck now, look. And so the way that it works is obviously that becomes a pocket so that you can you know, open it and close it and you can put ephemera in there. This opens up and that's the flap that holds it shut. And you've got a pocket in there that you can put something in, but you've also got this that you can add um, ephemera and uh, put things into. And you can also, you know, if you've got it that way, that can be a tuck spot there just to put something. I haven't got anything I can demonstrate it with you, but that can just be a tuck spot just there. You've got a tuck spot just there, and there, somewhere in there, like that. You've got somewhere in here you can put things. So I think that it's quite a useful little pocket um, and I think it's nice to include it and add it to a journal um, it's something a bit different just don't pull these too tight otherwise it will tear maybe the grommets would have been a better idea but I just thought not everybody's got a cropper dial so what do you think let me just get a couple of envelopes and we'll just do it again so no I'm not going to bore you by doing the whole thing again but we are just going to this. I'm just going to show you how I did mine. Oh, there are the cards. Wrong bit. One moment. OK, so oh, one envelope. <laughs> OK, two envelopes. We open the envelope. Or we open one of the envelopes. The way that I did it, once it's open, was fold them back on themselves we turn it so that they are like that okay they're like that and this one you get your envelope that you've not opened you slide it underneath 
and then this bit here is what you glue down so that then becomes your flip you could cut it that way and if I do make this one then I think I will do it that way so let's just close this one the same as we did on the other one without closing the pocket and then it's good to go so then you can decide how you want to do yours um, you don't have to do it like mine it's just a case of covering up the flips and things and where you want them to be no right and wrong um, you know you can have it any way you want so I look forward to seeing if you make them and I will put um, Ruby and Pearls I'll link her video below so that you can see how she did hers because um, as I say it's it wasn't my idea it was just this is how I made mine okay so I hope you have a go let me know if you do and let me know if I've confused you completely Take care, everyone. Bye.